our latest Urbex adventure took us to new territory as we travelled cross island in the hunt for special abandonments we couldn't see anywhere else. In the first episode filmed from our recent trip, we are looking inside a forgotten asylum that was so big it took us an entire day to explore. The complex is filled with stuff from a past era, contrasting to the natural decay that is slowly affecting all of the asylum. It is this mix that interests us most about abandoned properties, so we were sure we wouldn't miss out on this one. So join us as we look inside this disused institution which links to the dark mental health treatment in Ireland's history. It is day one in our three day visit to Ireland with the photographer Zevi. We have just boarded our flight and are about to take off. On this trip we are focusing on sites that have a combined effort of size and decay, plainly because it is something we aren't getting from England currently. Ireland has so many impressive vacancies but not that many explorers to look into them, so it's the ideal location for an urbex adventure. Upon landing we find our hire car for the trip, which is something we haven't had in any of our other journeys, therefore it should help us hit up some isolated spots we wouldn't have been able to manage otherwise. This impressive structure was formerly an asylum for the mentally ill, however its architecture and especially its colour is unusual to buildings of this nature we have seen before. The dark brick used stands out drastically from the nearby properties and is a metaphor for the darkness that went on in the asylum previously. Another bonus on this trip is that we have the advantage of Zevi's GoPro camera, so we can show you a lot more of our infiltration than we usually will be able to. Be sure to check out his page in the description of this video for some unique shots. Clearly, this courtyard between two wings of the hospital hadn't been maintained in a long time. The ground was heavily overgrown and ivy grew across the walls, entering the structure at many points. Luckily, there was an entrance for us as well. There was so much natural coverage that the building's interior was struggling to gain any light, however there was enough to see the asylum-esque hallways with their vibrant colour scheme. Sadly, we knew that behind each door in these corridors was a cell where patients at the institution would have been held while they stayed here, maybe even until the end of their lives. A stashed x-ray zone was found next, along with many medicine bottles, needles and the radiation screen in the room where the actual x-ray would have taken place. Other scenes we were coming across during the beginning of this infiltration led us to believe this abandonment was going to hold some very interesting features. Every room and hallway had something beautiful and unexpected inside. We also noticed that there was no graffiti anywhere which helped add on to the illusion that we were the only ones inside the structure, when in fact we weren't. Quickly after entering we met Forgotten Places Northern Ireland who was also visiting the asylum. You can find his links below. The 
massive hospital has been around since the early 1830s when it opened to take in patients from the district it is based in. When its reign started only 150 patients were catered for but quickly the facility became overcrowded so the asylum had to keep building new wings to match this. By the late 1920s it accommodated over 2000 patients. A horrible fact relating to the site is that it was built in an X shape, which was a concept that prisons were designed with at the time. Furthermore, patients were known as inmates, which develops the dark truth even more. Really, people weren't cared for here, but stored here to separate the mentally ill from the outside world. Meanwhile, we were somewhere around the admin portion of the site, which is underneath the tower you saw at the beginning of this video. At one time, this hugely ornate mirror had glass in it, but it seems it has been removed or smashed, even though there were no traces of shards anywhere. After finding a staircase down, we ended up in the basement where we would happen to make some interesting findings. Somehow in the deteriorating structure, in sections, the power still functioned, casting a yellow tint on the abundance of paperwork and folders that had been left down here. With loose cut wires hanging everywhere beside all these documents, it was actually a miracle a fire hadn't started, or even an explosion with the noises some of the electrics were making. In the late 80s, when deinstitutionalisation was introduced, the asylum entered a period of decline before the inevitable closure after 2010. Since then it was neglected completely, and you can tell this from the vast amount of belongings, furniture and other stuff remaining. Even medical equipment remained, but this could just be due to it becoming outdated and unusable in modern hospitals. full of beds sat undisturbed for almost a decade, having had no one sleep on them for all this time. Suddenly we spotted a white van moving towards the premises and we could only assume it was security. A man got out but we soon lost track of him. With the thought that the building was so large that he would never spot us, we continued our explore. Back 
By now we have managed to get lost in the infinite seeming corridors and rooms, as this site is one of those that you could come back and revisit to find bits you never saw on your first look. We decided to head upstairs as we were certain we hadn't been anywhere near the upper floors as of yet. The whole complex never goes over two storeys above ground level, which is pretty unique in comparison to hospitals nowadays. Soon enough we sighted the man again, in a small unattached building that must still be used, although we couldn't tell you what its purpose is. We were more interested in the part of the asylum we were inside, as we had just reached the facility's kitchens. This was one of the only areas of the site that was one story, so they constructed it with many skylights. After closure, the beaming sunlight forms beautiful natural decay, and this is one of our favourite parts of the entire hospital. Obviously the kitchens were gigantic in order to cook for so many patients and staff. They also transported us to the cleaning areas where there was still some machinery to see. Asylum dryers are an iconic scene at these structures, but we hadn't seen them before this abandonment. There was over 10 of them and they were much larger than normal washing machines, so they could clean hundreds of clothes at a time. The unique discoveries continued all the way up until we decided to conclude our exploration of the never-ending complex. For us, the decay and artifact remnants makes this asylum surpass any others we've done in the field, and we still aren't done. Later on we will share another building from the same hospital site which provided us with even more incredible findings. As for now though, it was time to head out of the main building. The historic structure isn't being maintained in any standard you'd expect for what it entails. All that is likely is the progression of the already dominant decay throughout the asylum, representing the constant decline since the introduction of deinstitutionalization more than 30 years ago. Thank you for watching the first episode recorded during our island trip. Be sure to like the video to show your support. We hope to see you next time.